full book. And if you order by calling the number on your screen, you'll get a free copy of Diamond V's home video, Drag Racing 90. Call today. Both drivers now spending their time concentrating on that Christmas tree because we have seen and they know that an advantage off the starting line can propel them into the final. Close race, and Jim White comes from behind to take the victory. White very late off the starting line. Dell Worsham almost pulled off a big upset here, but White's performance at a 532, while not as good as the previous rounds, was good enough to earn him a spot in the final. In replay, you see the advantage. Six hundredths of a second. Pole shot going to Worsham. Then as they move down track, it was all white. The performance of the Dodge at over 281 miles an hour was enough to overcome the early advantage by young Dell Worsham White into the finals. Even though a 532 is way off the pace of this car's normal performance, I think considering the engine change and the thrash that his guys went through, Jim White may be fairly pleased with that 532. We're pleased to get in the finals any time, and especially when you have to race the guys like these kids. This Worsham guy, he's worn me out all year this year. I uh, certainly have to take this hat off to my crew, Wes yeah. Cerny, Roland, every one of the guys. Uh, I'd give you their names, but I'm exhausted. I can't all do it. Wayne, Dave, Rick, uh, Brian, those guys worked their tails off between rounds, and they got this car in the finals. Where it's going to run quicker. You bet. You don't think this isn't a hard sport. Did you hear Jim White breathing so deeply? He only ran for about five and a half seconds, and yet the pressure absolutely intense. Talk about pressure. Mark Oswald is putting it on John Ford. Oswald in the in and out burger Pontiac has got the lane choice. He's selected the far side of the track. Force with the Castro Oles knows he has to win to keep pace with the points earning capability of Jim White. Fighting with John Force and Oswald out in front and into the finals. Oswald takes the victory in a close race. 525 at 266 miles an hour may have hurt the motor just a little bit but that can be repaired what cannot be repaired is the loss by john ford a slight advantage off the starting line by oswald five thousandths of a second to be exact then in the performance of the two cars it was oh so close Force stepped up to a 526 elapsed time, but it was nine thousandths of a second slower than Oswald. There's what 14 thousandths looks like. Well, John, you yeah, hate Mark Oswald for beating you, but you're going to join his fan club when he races white. There'll be nobody cheering louder than you for him. Well, he's quicker. Uh, he beat us. Uh, we just got to count on him uh, maybe to get this guy out. Uh, it was an exciting race. Uh, in and out was right out the window, and uh, we just did all we could this weekend, and uh, we're excited with our car. We're just going to head for Dallas, and. Uh, let someone else try to take that old uh, punch car out. So Jim White in a position to add some points to his total, get a little bit closer to John Force, but he's got Mark Oswald standing in his way, and Oswald has shown constant improvement throughout elimination. Right now, let's go back to the far end and Steve Evans. That was a brilliant drag race. Had to be exciting for you to be in it. Uh, yeah, it was. John really ran good. And uh, what he said about you? Yeah, we had a problem down the other end. It ran flat for the last 300 feet, or you know, and it, I was really worried that he might come around me. But this In-N-Out Burger car was strong today. Flat at a 525. Yeah, I think we got some more, and uh, you know, it was nice and smooth that run. Bill's getting it just where we like it. All right. A little bit of smoke out of it. Probably just a burn piston. Shouldn't be a big deal. The finals in all professional categories coming up next at the AC Delco Heartland National. The work progressing on Pat Austin's Castrol Top Fuel Dragster, getting it ready for the final round race against the Winston champ, Joe Amato. That's Pat's brother, Mike Austin, in the sunglasses, looking on over the shoulder of crew chief Lee Beard. And for a new Top Fuel crew member, there's nobody better to learn from than the master himself, Lee Beard. We're ready for the finals in Pro Stock Eliminator. Here's the AC Delco Oldsmobile of Warren Johnson. He lost a shot at lane choice with the mechanical problems he suffered in the final four round. This is the Winston champion. Daryl Alderman at the wheel of the Wayne County Mopar Parts Dodge Daytona. You're on board as he stages this car trying for an unprecedented 10th event win in a single season. If he gets it, it will be an all-time record. 
This is the man that's trying to stop him, and he has got his confidence shaken by the mechanical problems that have struck his team. Warren Johnson driving his Oldsmobile Cutlass. Darrell Alderman at the wheel of the Dodge Daytona. Both cars, 500 cubic inch engines, running on racing gasoline through two four-barrel carburetors. The finals in pro stock, and a huge hole shot for Darrell Alderman. Something going wrong for Johnson on the starting line. Alderman already has his hands on the parachute. And for the 10th time in a single season, Darrell Alderman is crown champion. His time, a 7.23 at over 189 miles an hour. And our replay shows us the advantage that was gained by Darrell Alderman. Obviously, something going wrong mechanically with Warren Johnson's car as Alderman streaks for the finish the undefeated and still champion of Heartland Raceway Park. Great job. Oh, thank you, Steve. I tell you, this, this little Dodge Daytona sure works good here. And uh, this, uh, this is a special race to us. Jim Musgraves, his wife, is in the hospital this weekend, sick, and I want to ded dedicate this race to Cheryl. I'd like to thank my sponsors, Mopar and Dodge Motorsports. Wouldn't you like to just roll up this ribbon of asphalt and take it with you and lay it down everywhere you go? Oh, definitely, because like I said, this car just works perfect here. So do you, my friend. Thank you. Even in victory, Darrell Alderman's first thoughts on a crewman and his wife. Heading into Dallas, Alderman has got a gigantic lead. In fact, it is so big, all he has to do is qualify, and he will be crowned for the second consecutive year the Winston Pro Stock Champion. Jim White has big hopes for the same honor in Funny Car Eliminator, and a win over Mark Oswald could move him a little closer to that goal. Funny Car Final next. Burger Pontiac of Mark Oswald in the final round of Funny Car Eliminator with lane choice over this man, Jim White, driving the Hawaiian Bunch Dodge Daytona. On paper today, Oswald is the better car. But Jim White, throughout this entire season, has had an incredible string of both elapsed times and speed. He credits his car owner with a lot of the responsibility for that success. Steve Evans earlier talked to Roland Leon. Roland, in the last three weeks, not only have you set records and won races and a ton of money, but you've had a great time as a car owner. This is what it's all about. Oh, yeah, it's been a long time, Steve, since uh, we had a lot of fun. Uh, if the folks remember about two and a half years ago where we were just hoping the car wouldn't catch on fire and we could go this many rounds. Uh, but, yes, uh, it is great. We're all having a lot of fun. Uh, uh, the crew is all working hard, but having fun, we're all working hard. Uh, we hope we can turn this into something and maybe uh, get a new sponsor for next year uh, so we can continue this uh, momentum we got. We wish you luck on that. Thank you, Steve. The most interested spectator amongst the huge throng here is John Forth, the leader in the Winston Point chase. You know who he's rooting for, the red and white Pontiac in the far lane. Like Darrell Alderman in pro stock, Mark Oswald is also aiming for his third consecutive victory here at the Heartland Nationals. Dominating from start to finish, Mark Oswald wins his third consecutive title with an even quicker elapsed time than the round before. A 524 at 278 miles an hour, thoroughly outclassing Jim White to take the victory. A very slight starting line advantage going to Mark Oswald, but the performance advantage was substantial. 524 for Oswald to a losing 531 for Jim White, just unable to run the quick numbers that we had seen earlier in the race. Steve? Well, the great White that couldn't be caught has been reeled in by Mark Oswald. Stunning job, 524. It's not me, it's just everybody on this In-N-Out Burger team, they're tough. You know, Steve, has been just a Cinderella story with this car. The first race we ever took it to, Gainesville this year, we won with. This is the last race this car will be won at. We took it out winning, so Jeff and Susan Bernstein have been real good to us in, in campaigning this car, and we're just glad we could give them a winner going in and a winner going out. And your third straight win here, incredible. Yeah, I noticed that uh, Daryl did too, so... If Amato wins, it'll be three of us. All right. Celebrate with your crew. They did a great job. All right. <laughs> well, Mark Oswald may not be in contention in the Winston point standings, he certainly had an impact. 
John Force continues to lead, and it's got 200 more points as a result of White's loss to Oswald in the final. Dunn is third, Oswald fourth, and McCulloch number five. Joe Amato ready to do his burnout in the finals of Top Fuel Eliminator. Our onboard camera looking down on the engine as Pat Austin comes to the starting line and much to everybody's relief, successfully completes his burnout. Earlier in the finals of Top Alcohol Funny Car, Pat Austin provided himself with the opportunity to become the first ever to win two national event titles as Chuck Cheeseman had difficulties and Austin ran a 598 low ET of eliminations at Alcohol Funny Car at over 232 miles an hour. That gave him 43 national event victories, second only to Bob Glidden's total of 80. Pat Austin reminds everyone that war, as in Walt Austin Racing, that's him, his dad, has been declared in Top Fuel Eliminator. And nobody knows it better than Joe Amato. The driver of the Team Valvoline entry in the far lane's got a lot going for him here in the final round. He has got lane choice with a great 497 in the final four. And should he be able to prevail over the 26-year-old Austin? He's gained another 200 points on Kenny Bernstein in the Winston points chase and his quest for his fourth Winston title. Both cars set. And Austin is out in front. Look at the right-hand side of your screen. Pat Austin has won it. He has established himself as a true contender in top fuel racing. A near-perfect reaction time as Walt Austin and Lee Beard congratulate one another and Pat Austin has found his four-second performance. A 497 puts away Joe Amato's 501. Austin had over 500 of a second advantage at the starting line. He didn't even begin to look back. Pat knew that Amato was back there, but he had such a lead across the finish line. No chance of loss here. Pat Austin trying to get composed because he knows he just made drag racing history. No one has ever done what you've just accomplished. <laughs> What can you say? I'm... Well, I'll tell you, give you more good news. Your first four-second run as well. I told you it was going to come at the right time. You yes, just, you did. You got to set him up, and we set him up and did just what we wanted to do. And you drove the wheels off this race car today. Hey, I got big shoes to fill, and I'm trying to do a good job. Absolutely. Gary would be proud. The transition from the funny car to the dragster, it's not easy. I think I rang her out a little high, or a little little long and low gear in a second. <laughs> There's only one gear in there. Oh, you backdoored it. Yeah, it's a, yeah, I did. I mean, I took time hitting the shoot. I was making sure he wasn't coming by me. I was going to beat him to the last turnoff, and I think we did that, too. I just got to say that my dad is, uh, he's an outstanding individual. He's a great, I just love him to tell. He's my dad, my brother, uh, Lee Beard, the crew, Dickie, Dana, Brian, my mom, my, gr my fiance, Keela, and everybody at home. The Tacoma boys hits big time. We're going in style. 26 years of age, he may be the greatest driver this sport has ever seen. Steve, I know one person won't dispute that thought. That is Joe Amato, who continues to hold a substantial lead over Kenny Bernstein, headed to Dallas. Prudhomme is third, Hawley fourth, and Laurie Jones rounds out the top five in the Winston point standing. For Steve Evans, I'm Dave McClellan saying so long from Heartland Park, Topeka. The 1991 NHRA AC Delco Heartland Nationals has been brought to you by AC Delco Automotive Parts. AC Delco, it's like buying time. And by Quaker State, the big Q is one tough motor oil. And by Budweiser, the king of beers. With that clean, crisp, cold taste, nothing beats the bud. steering toggle switch at the same time while giving it gas against the clock. 19.70 seconds. The first time ever that Dennis Anderson has brought the incredible gravedigger Chevrolet to Tampa, Florida inside Tampa Stadium, and they love every minute of it. The Kill Devil Hills North Carolina veteran has a huge following of fans in the Southeast, let alone the rest of the country. Problems on the first set of cross cars. Anderson is having a dismal time. Something goes away in the drivetrain or transmission. Ron Dennis and the no problem Ford Bronco pulls to the starting line. We asked Ron who he thought was going to be the toughest to run against tonight. You may 
all eight of them, you know, they're going to be tough. I mean, all eight of us are in the top trucks in the country, so it's anybody's ball game, but I'm going to win. You're gonna win? <laughs> I hope, yes. Well, you've already seen Ron Dennis win one event on Super Tracks this year. It was in the state of Florida. Maybe that's a good sign. He takes the no-problem Bronco around the turn. Very nicely still. You can see him cranking the wheel in the cockpit. There's a tremendous amount of physical effort. 17.59 seconds.